writing objects to files. So let's talk about how you might you can write an object to a file or a stream really. Um, so this is something that happens a lot or quite often. Uh, you have a class. I'm going to create a new class called person, and um, um, just gonna, I'm going to do that right now. Um, and you just want to have a couple of uh, methods here. The person has a name and uh, an age, and say it has a bunch of other things. And then in your program right here, you uh, you know you create a person, and uh, you know you set it. It's uh, set its name. Uh, whoops, Arthur got name is of course Arthur Dent, and Arthur age is uh, unknown. So forty four, and uh, so okay. Uh, now you want to write this person Arthur. You want to put Arthur in a file. How do you do that? Uh, I mean, so you could say, okay, well, Arthur's got a name and an age, so I'm gonna go have a for loop. I'm gonna make a file. I'm gonna write first the name as a string, and then I'm gonna write the age, and then you know, etc. And then I'll be done. But you know, if Arthur had a bunch more other predicates um, properties, it would take a while, and that's kind of annoying. It would be nice to just take Arthur and put him on a file. Well, you can do that in Java. Uh, all you have to do is this: you take the class person and you say person implements the serializable serializable interface as such, and uh, you have to uh, import that. So we're going to import Java IO serializable, and the serializable interface has no methods, so that's nice. So there's no methods that you need to implement. All you have to do is put that there as such. And then once you do that, then you can write Arthur or any person into a file. So let's do that. So let's uh, first I'm gonna need a file name. I'm gonna call you know, data .bin, and then object output stream OS is a new object output stream and a new, new file output with stream uh, with the file name, right? So that's how we create an object output stream, of course. Now we have to import that. And then we need to tr uh, import that. And then we need my try catch block. And then I think I'm set. So I just added the two imports here, this import IO exception and object output stream. And uh, I, I am catching the two possible exceptions, file not found and IO exception, as we usually do. And now I can just say os.write object is the call, and I say Arthur. Boom. And of course, let's remember to close this. I'm going to close that. And thus, I can <clears throat> write Arthur to a file. I'm going to print here a little done writing and I'm going to run this. This is done writing. Okay. <clears throat> and uh, here the file just appeared, the data.bin file appeared. Of course, it's a binary file. I'll try to open it with the text editor and you know, it's going to look, it's a binary file. So you can see sort of a little bit, it's a person and it has a name. Which is a string and it is Arthur Dent. The 44 is nowhere to be found, but we assume it's there. Uh, but again, that's a binary file, you're not supposed to open that. So, did it work? Well, the only way to make sure it worked is to read it back. So, to read it back, it's the same idea. We use an object input string. Input stream is a new object input stream, which takes a new file input stream, which takes the file name, which is the same as before. My one, I'm gonna import that guy. 
Uh, we got to import this guy and we got to add try catch block around everything. So now I can say person P is is dot read object. So, um, and uh, you see there's still one problem. I have to cast that guy to a person and there's gonna be another problem, uh, which is I have to catch the class not found exception. So this, the read object returns something of type object. Remember in Java, everything is an object, right? Object is the top level class. Everything inherits from object. So, this is going to return an object which I, I know because you know I wrote to this file. I know that that object is really a person, so I can typecast that down or cast that down to a person as I'm doing here. And then I can put that on P. Uh, and uh, so that's that part. The other part is the exception. This might throw this class not found exception. So basically, it, it might be that the person, the when I read this class here, it's not a person, it's some other class, and uh, you know this is gonna fail. So it's gonna throw that exception. Uh, again, that's not gonna happen in this case, but maybe I'm reading a file that's written by another program. And uh, okay, so I got the person then. Let's just verify that I did uh, read it correctly. So I say read uh, name equals and p that name. And age equals p that age, and I should probably close this too. No, nope, not p. I'm gonna close the input stream. Okay, and then I can run that. And uh, sure enough, we're done writing. I read name equals Arthur Dent. Age is forty-four, which is what we wrote. So this worked, right? So that's all you need to do read object and the write object here. Write the object and read the object. The main thing to remember, of course, is that you have to know what, what object you wrote in. Here we wrote a person, Arthur is a person, and I have to make sure that when I read that object, it is a person. I can also put many multiple objects, and you know, I can put a person, and if I have a, you know, like, uh, an employee class, I can write another employee after that. I just have to remember that when I read them, I read them in the same order that I wrote them and I type cast them down correctly to the correct types. Uh, it doesn't have to be a file. The cool thing about this is I could you know, send this to another computer. This is how we do some distributed programming. You can send instances of a person to another computer in another Java program running on another computer. Um, so one last thing is going back over here. Uh, so you saw that I just all I have to do was put the serializable here, and it worked just fine. This is gonna work as long as all the properties are themselves serializable. So you know, string is serializable, integers and doubles are serializable. So most types are serializable. Uh, really, the only types that are not serializable are streams. So streams are not serializable. So namely, you know, this guy, the object output stream, if I had an object output stream in here, um, that would not work. So object output stream, you know, public OS. Uh, of course, I, I we have to import that. Um, so that, you know, it still, it still doesn't give me, Eclipse doesn't give me an error, but at runtime, if I set this OS to be some object output stream, and then I try to serialize it at runtime, it's going to give me an error. It's going to say, no, I cannot, you cannot do that. And, uh, actually we can just test this out. Uh, we can say Arthur.OS is OS, right? So we're going to set it to that and then try to run that. Uh, try to run that, and uh, uh, that did work. What do you, am I doing wrong? Probably object output stream is OS. Uh, 
I gotta do it here <laughs> before I write it. Okay. Uh, let's try to run that again, and now you see the error. So it says, um, not serializable. Java I/O not serializable. And it's gonna tell me that you know this object here uh, is not serializable. Line 23, Arthur is not serializable. The reason it's not serializable is because we set this OS. Notice that, you know, if I just comment that out, I run it, it'll run fine. So, and it runs fine because Arthur.OS is null. And null is serializable, so it's only when I actually set it to something, uh, to an actual object output stream, that I get the runtime error. So this is very nice. It's a very nice way of saving your data to a file. Uh, so once you write bigger applications, you're going to be using this a lot. You're going to be creating objects, save them into file, and then read in the, read those objects back when the program starts. Uh, say, say you're writing a paint application. You might have an object that represents what the user is painting. And then you just write that object to a file. Then when the user says open, you just open those objects up and you're ready to go. So you don't have to worry about creating a format for representing your data.